Oh, and look at that beautiful curve. <laughs> yes. These are a couple of my favorite discontinued pigments. This is manganese blue, PB33. They stopped making it in the early 90s. And this is quinacridone orange, which was discontinued pretty recently. Um, it had been developed uh, as a color for cars. And like quinacridone gold, it was kind of a popular car color in the 70s, 80s, but when it fell out of popularity, they stopped making the pigment. So here's what we're gonna do with these two guys today. We're gonna mix them together and create sort of a gradation from one color to the other, because what we wanna do is measure the path that the color traces through color space, because it's pretty weird. Manganese blue is actually, to my knowledge, the highest chroma blue pigment. In other words, it has the most intensity and quinacridone orange. This is actually about the same hue as pyrrole orange, uh, which is a little bit warmer than cadmium orange. So what I'm gonna do is take just a tiny bit here and smear it out. You can see, you can see it's actually, you know, it looks a little bit more vivid when you smear it out. That's why I call it a hot brown. It's somewhere between orange and red, right? <laughs> I'm doing this backwards. We want to take a tiny bit over this side. There we are. And see what happens here. Now this is surprise number one. This is a brown, essentially a red-orange that's low chroma, and we're mixing it with a blue that's in the neighborhood of cerulean, right? It's, it's leaning towards cyan. It's, it's a greenish blue. So it's obviously, the blue is reflecting a lot of green light. But what's interesting is when you throw a tiny bit of quinacridone orange, rather than going gray or going purple, you can actually, check this out, you can actually get some blue greens, like a dull cyan almost. I'm actually gonna throw a little bit more uh, manganese in there. Tiny bit, tiny bit of, of the PO48 is drastically altering the color here. I just, I think that's a lovely color. It's almost like a teal, isn't it? Now we're gonna snag a little of that, snag a little more of this, and try to step our way gradually over. See, I've already gone, this is like a sap green already. I've gone way too toward the middle. So let me slide that over, grab a tiny bit. This uh, manganese blue from Vasari is actually, it's very buttery. There's a lot of vehicle. All right, so here we go from like a teal to more of an emerald green. And let's get a little more blue in here. I wanna land somewhat in the middle. Yeah, that's a nice uh, sappy green. All right, so now we're gonna lean more toward the orange. You know, some brands call this burnt orange. Um, and that always makes me think of the Mitchells versus the Machines where they're driving around that like early 90s station wagon, which is basically this color. Uh, and one of the robots who's hunting them says, is that a burnt orange 1993 station wagon? Um, and then the station wagon runs the robots over like a bunch of bowling pins. It's a great film if you haven't seen it. And now look at this is like a, it's like a number. It's a number now. So we're in the dull warm yellows. We've traveled across the color wheel. We've avoided gray. We haven't gone purple, despite how warm and reddish this brown is. Uh, so if you haven't guessed already, what we're looking at is a very curvy mixing path. It curves through the color space from one paint to the other. And what we're gonna do is actually use a computer program, a free program you can download called the Artist's Helper, programmed by Bob Burridge. So what do I mean by color space? Basically, when you try to measure perceived color differences. You get this whole science that's been evolving for almost 100 years called colorimetry, the measurement of color, but in terms of perceived color differences. In other words, how different is this green from this green? If I'm trying to quantify that, I'm engaging in a science called colorimetry. And one of the color spaces developed in that effort is called C-Love, C-I-E, L-U-V, where the CIE is the name of the institution that developed it. 
Um, it's a French acronym for basically the International Commission on Illumination. And then LUV, L stands for lightness, and U and V are these two factors that are derived from data from observational uh, testing of um, perceived color differences. Basically, that's a very quick definition. So what I'm gonna try to do is get these on the paper palette here below my plastic palette in swatches and then kind of blend them into a continuous gradation. And I have paint all over my hand. Ugh. These are all the yellows from the other day when I was experimenting with trying to neutralize yellow with different pigments. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful blue. Oh. Yeah, the mass tone is nice, but then also look at that undertone, right? It's, it's pretty close to cyan, isn't it? Let's get our teal in there. Smear it out, kind of blend them. Actually, I should get mass tone as well because I don't know what I'm doing, but I do know that not doing it feels worse. Have you seen that quote online recently? It's a good one, isn't it? Okay. All right, let's take a snapshot here. Let's drag this photo into the artist's helper. Wasn't able to white balance it and everything, but we'll get a quick and dirty idea of what's going on here. I can add the entire photograph to this color space. Well, add image color data, original subject. Okay, and obviously look, there's a lot of white and all this kind of stuff going in here because it's the whole picture, including the palette in the background. Let's rotate this so we're looking top down on the color space. Oh, and look at that beautiful curve. <laughs> yes. All right. And what we can actually do is grab a few samples as well. Okay. And what we want to do is, bleh? oh no, I don't want to do that. I want to go back to my color space tab and I can actually get all of those swatches to show up. Hmm, why is it not showing them? Okay. I have checked all of these, and they're in no particular order here. Uh, you know what, I'm gonna remove the pixel data because I think the problem is it's just obscuring. Yeah, they're in there, they're lost in the thicket. So I'm gonna remove original subject. Ah, oh no, Bob, it's broken. We'll remove all image color data. Oh, ooh, and there we are. All right, so here is our beautiful curve we can see that in a perceptual color space this you know you see why it's this funky shape is because it's actually the rgb cube but distorted to show more properly the distances associated with the differences between color in human perception we can actually show this as an rgb cube here's our perfect cube here if i rotate it you can kind of see that right um, but this distorts the distances between these, these color swatches. It, it's still a nice little curve, but um, let, let's go with the kind of more scientifically accurate one here. So we're going to look at sea love. And this is showing us how, starting with my blue down here, um, I'm, I'm climbing up through cyan. I'm going through green at not a small amount of chroma. I mean, this is visibly green. It's not like a chromatic gray, right? We're really curving around there. So let's look at it from the side as well. I'm gonna turn this this way. Um, it's, it's showing you these lines connecting them to the center point, which is like middle gray, 50% gray. Um, so they're all, in terms of tone, darker than that. Uh, we, could grab, we could grab some swatches from above as well if we want. I'm kind of curious, so I'm gonna do it. So I'll grab like a light blue. There we are. Um, I didn't really get like a light, light one here. And then maybe something over here. Let's take a look here. Oh, isn't that interesting? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Here, I'll go to the top again. So you see, there's, there's my lighter ones. Um, and this kind of explains, if you recall, that initial curve we saw kind of starts in the dark blue curves out and around and goes uh, goes back into the orange, right? So this gives us a, a fuller appreciation of the range of, of this palette. So essentially, what, what's the point? What's the point? The point is you can take two colors that visually are kind of like, 
on the same side of the neutral point, right? Like uh, the burnt orange and the manganese blue should draw a line through purple. But you can take two colors like that and you can mix them and go around the neutral point the other way. What does this mean? It means that you can create a limited palette painting with only two colors. You know, add some black and white in there if you want shadows and highlights and stuff like that. But essentially, you've got the entire spectrum here. You don't have the non-spectral colors. You don't have the purples, right? But you've got everything from a dark blue. Well, not dark, but let's call it a deep blue, right? If we have the mass tone of that uh, manganese, we get everything from a deep blue all the way through the cyan, greens, yellows, oranges, and something that will read as a red. And I, I think that's kind of cool because you can plan a landscape or even probably a portrait that will have complements in it. Like this sienna is pretty complementary to this maximum blue. A couple complement contrasts that are achievable within this gamut, within this spread, as well as like accent colors. Um, and I, it's like that's all you need to create a cohesive color scheme. So you don't even need three primaries. You can get by with two. So this is exciting. This makes me want to paint something. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Hmm. So another important question is like why does this happen? Why can a brown that is very reddish and a blue give us a green mixture and it's because both of those are reflecting enough green obviously that cyan leaning blue is reflecting a lot of those middle wavelengths of light what's less obvious is how a brown can be doing that if you look at the spectral reflectance profile of a brown pigment it's going to look like a slope a gradual slope that's leaning toward the longer wavelengths so something can be uh, reflecting a lot of green, but you're not going to see it as green if it's, you know, the slope is going up, it's reflecting more yellow than green and more red than yellow. And that's the case with quinacridone orange.